Time for a chat with mates. $20 off for five months with mate internet now, Brian. Our next guest, what about this for a resume? 13 tests for the Kangaroos, nine origins for the Blues, two Super League Tri-Series games for New South Wales, played games for the Rabbitohs, Seagulls and the Cowboys, actor-writer, and he's parked on my left at the moment. You're parked on my right. Two of the great, fiercest back rowers in all of rugby league. Yes. I feel like, you know I what I feel like, Brian? Wedged in between you two? I feel like Mr. Inbetweener. Ah, uh, that's what I feel like. Good segue. That's a good, you're very good segue. Mate. You like very, that? Very sharp, mate. Very sharp. <laughs> well, that little voice you've just heard teased is this particular man here. There's been nothing wrong with the form of this man in the game. What a tackle from Roberts. Crunch. And he screams at him to get up and play it. So Roberts is all fired up. What a tackle. Potter was flying a million miles an hour. This is what you call a dead end bang. Oh, I love that. That's the voice of Graham Hughes. I remember that. What did you say to him, Robbo? Or oh, give him the intro. Sorry. Say welcome. Oh, Sorry, welcome to the run home with Joel and Fletch, <laughs> the great Ian Roberts. That's nice to be here, boys. It's, uh, I feel like it's um, it's going to be pretty hard to live up to that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Robbo, what did you say to poor old Potsy I when you no, just leveled him? <laughs> I have no idea, man. I do know that I was pretty fired up, and I was. Um, that was back in the day when I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder, so I, I can't imagine what I said. Really. Yeah, yeah. 86, you start with South Sydney. Take yeah. us through that story. Um, man, I've, I mean, I was a South Junior my whole life. Like, I mean, I played uh, all, my, all my junior footy in, uh, uh, for South. It was kind of um, it's just a, a natural progression. It was kind of weird. Like, not weird, but I, when you think back, I remember at the end of 86, I made $9,000 clear, and I thought I was flash. I, like, I was a sparky, <laughs> but I you know, like it's a huge di- difference. Very different time back then, mate. It was, uh, I mean, we used to train at, um, I don't know, Fletch was ever in this situation. We used to train at like five o'clock so everyone could get home mm. from work, yeah. get chasing and go to training. Yeah. Very different world. You know? And, you know, twice a week. That's right. Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And then did you go out on the on the drink? Was, uh, was, I don't know you weren't a big drinker, but your gang, far yeah. out, you had some uh, heavy hitters. I got, uh, got Craig Coleman. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a few. Uh, Mick Mon- uh, Montgomery, yeah, there's a few big hitters there, mate. Um, that, that, mate, I wasn't, I, I've never really been a drinker, but I, uh, it was never really my thing. I was, mate, I was in that, I do remember in that pack, I was um, particularly in 86, I mean, I was, I think I was like 20, and it was quite a, it was quite an intimidating pack to come into, you know what I mean? Like you had Les Davis and Wayne Chisholm, Mario Fennick, uh, 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 Mick Andrews. Mick Andrews, you know, like, yeah. they were all kind, kind of like ferocious in their own way. I just went, and there used to be – the first game we played was um, Charity Shield. The first game I played, I would have been 20, and I was playing. I was packing in against um, Craig Young. I didn't think – you know, you're like you're 20, you don't think you should be there, right? Like yeah. You say, what am I doing here? But he was a kind of a, like a bit of a uh, a bit of an item for me. And I do remember there was a second scrum, and we used to have this oh, – I think I've, you might have heard this – Story flesh. We I love had, it. I know what's going on. We used to have this call uh, called Henry. Mm. Like Craig Coleman, Tug. I'm, listen, I'm just going to call him Tug. He's Tugger to me. That, that yeah. was his nickname, Craig. Where Craig would walk through the middle of the scrum and say, Henry's on, Henry's on. And that was an all in. Yeah. And I'll never forget him. And I was like 20, and Craig Young was <laughs> quite opposite me. And I was just like, no, no, no way. Like, I almost like, always went to water, mate. Like, I hit him once. He didn't, it was almost like he brushed to the side and he grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and nearly put his hand through the back of my head. You know, I was just like, but I didn't. I just like that, that year was like when that Henry call used to. Oh my god, it was terrifying, mate. It was where, terrifying. Where, okay, who would call Henry? Uh, Craig Coleman. And, and would yeah. Tugger ever get oh, involved? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Henry's on, boys. Oh, Henry's Henry on. on now on TV. <laughs> and actually, literally, Jamie Goddard and uh, Joey John's going down. But when would, would he? When would he use it, Robbo? Like, we, is it when you were getting beat, or he was just sort of feeling the game? Just feeling the game. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just feeling the game and how we were going. That was a second. Like, I mean. It, it wasn't unusual for him to you know, be calling it in the second half, just just depending on where we were at. Um, it was in uh, that was in honour of um, Henry Morris, who was uh, if anyone knows the South Juniors, he's used to be the uh, he was he, he was like the, the the king of the juniors. Yeah. And Henry's really done a lot for like junior football in the South area. Yeah, you know Craig Young. So he made the Australian schoolboys the first ever Australian schoolboys. I think it might have been, and he had never played a game one single game of rugby league till that time. So he he made the Australian schoolboys. He was a soccer player. Star, was he star soccer player? He snuck Craig in. Young. Craig Young was a star soccer player, like gun soccer player. And never played one game. There was, he'd never ever played a game of rugby league. 
He wanted to try it out. Snuck down on it to get a day off school. Snuck down on trials down in Canberra. Oh, wow. Made the Australian schoolboys team. He was, like, he, was yeah. built, he was built like a tree, mate. It was just all there, – there, there was no shape. It was just all head and then straight down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he was like um, – so he was part of that Division 21, which was police, yeah. which Very basically good. could – like, if you're having troubles in your town, i.e., like some bad dudes coming, this Division 21 would come in and would just, like, have the green light yeah. to, to basically go to town on them. <laughs> like, he was a tough man. Yeah. What about a tough yeah. town? You, a lot of people don't know this, and I actually didn't know it myself. You've had a big year, 1986, but you actually end up in, in England for Wigan. Uh, yeah, that was um, because I'm, um, I was born in, in the UK, um, and back then the rules were a little bit different. And also, that there was um, – you had the English – they were playing in our off season, so we could we we, we could uh, we had that uh, situation. Um, but yeah, because I was English born, I didn't qualify as an import. There used to be allowed three imports back then. Um, yeah. So what what happened in '86? We we got we got knocked out uh, in the semis. Uh, South got knocked out in the semis, and then because there was about six or seven of us, and then it used to be the under twenty threes reserve grade and first grade. There'd, there'd have been about six or seven of us in the first grade that were under twenty threes, and they dropped a few of us back through the year so we could qualify for for the twenty three under twenty threes. There's about seven of us played in the under twenty threes grand final. We beat Penrith on the Sunday, and I flew to England on the Sunday night and played uh, on t- Tuesday night in the um, uh, what was it? It was the Lancashire Cup semi final. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got Chris Radlinski coming up. Did he cross paths with either of you two? Uh, yeah, Rads was there when I was there. He didn't play, though. My la- His last year was my first year at Wigan. Gotcha. I loved it. Did you, you want to play with him, Ian? No. 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 Uh, it was incredible. It was like, oh, it's did you best. play Central Park? Yep. Oh, no, no, no. The, the new one. The new one. Yeah, the, right. um, yeah. DW. Yeah, we um, that year I played. That was 86. So we, we played against – We I think we won four of the five competitions that, that, uh, over there then. Um, we played against the, the touring kangaroo side. It was like, it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Robbo, so as a South supporter growing up, mad South fan, 1990 was a tough year to take when you went to uh, Manly. Yeah. Um, tell us, tell us a bit about that. Like, obviously money was just yeah. coming into the game. Was it just purely a money thing? Uh, Bozo. Well, no, no well, so see, Bozo wasn't there. I mean, Bozo wasn't connected. With, well, he was with, still with the club, but he wasn't connected in any way. Like, Graham Lowe was the uh, the coach at Manly. Right, yeah. I had had a good relationship with Lowe when I was at Manly. That was in, like, 86. But, the, 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 yeah, the, the main reason was um, it, it was about money. I think I was getting, like, 220000 That was, like, huge money. Massive money. Oh, massive, massive, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, and the other thing was, I mean, in truth, I, I, uh, I had also – I mean, it was – this is going to sound a bit silly, but in 1990, I had decided like to come out, like and just talk about because it was the worst kept secret rugby yeah. league. Even when I was at South, mate, like like you know, I used to take my partner, but I but I used to be. Uh, it's a bit hard to, to, to explain this. I used to. I was a bit pig-headed as a kid. I, I never had an issue with me being same-sex attracted. Like, but I I didn't used to, I used to think that I shouldn't have to announce it. Like mm, people yeah. should just, like I should take my partner to functions and yep. one that, like no one else announces that they're taking no, that no, they're stri- no, heterosexual. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's how I used to think. But I also know as I've gotten older, I'd always realize, also realize you can't be what you can't see. And like invisibility is important. Like so I, I understand. So I did originally, well, that was one of the reasons when I, the deciding factors when I left Manly was, I was uh, so when I left South to go to Manly, I was going to come out that year. But that same year over in England, I always like to mention this when my story comes up about me coming out. Um, it was a guy by the name of Justin Fashion who was playing uh, in the Premier League. Yes. Uh, he came out that, that yep. same – he was the first guy, man in a professional team sport to come out publicly. And he was like crucified by the British press and by supporters. Uh, he retired in 1994. That's the same year I came out and took his own life in 98. Uh-huh. But it's something like – I like to say that story because when I first went to Manly, I was going to come out that same year. And just seeing the way that he was treated – and but we're now talking about a time there was no mobile phones. Uh-huh. If, you, if you follow the story, you had to read about it or, or watch it on the TV or, or on the radio. You know what I mean? He was crucified by the um, – yeah, by the British press. I was just like, shit, I don't, don't want to be a part of that. So, But, Robbo, why 1990? So did you think to yourself, well, I'm going to have a fresh start over at Manly. Yeah. I may as well yeah. have a fresh start and let everyone know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. It's just like, like, uh, um, yeah, my family had known for a long time. I was just like, oh, 
just get it over with. And then the whole thing with, like I said, with, with Justin happened, and I was just, just remember being, oh, shit, I don't know, if, I don't know, if, I don't know, if sports ready for that. Like it, it's hard to explain, mate. Right. Um, yeah, I, I just yeah, and that's kind of what. what so I got to Manly, um, and even though you know the crazy thing was my then partner Shane, um, and like everyone knew Shane and I were together. Everyone at Nan- Manly knew we were together. I mean, Shane used to be you know the guy in, in the mascot suit, the guy in that, in yeah, that yeah. seagull suit yeah. with the big, the big freaking beak and the wings yeah, and yeah. like doing cartwheels. That was my partner Shane. Oh, right? was it? Like everyone, uh, like was every- that part of the deal? That was that package deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, Shane but it's needs true, to get. Right? Like, yeah. that, 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 that was like everyone knew that. Like and um, so, but but. Uh, um, yeah, it was kind of weird. And then, did you know that story, Brian? Yeah, I had. I heard, oh, that. I heard, yeah. I heard that story. So I just um, then after a couple of years, I was just saying, like it, it, something happened. There was a young fellow by the name of uh, Blake Stenning, who um, was a young bloke who uh, had contracted AIDS through a blood transfusion. He was born like um, three months prem, and then had a uh, a closed valve in his in his lung. At two weeks, he had this operation. He got he got had a blood transfusion mm. anyway I, I became quite close with him just seeing the way that he was treated like i became quite close with him he passed away when he was about eight and a half uh, and for the last couple of years of his life um my friends and i were quite close to him. he'd never had a real like a normal fam- uh childhood because he'd never been to school he was always in and out of hospital but just seeing the way he was treated i do remember and i also lost my first partner my, my first uh boyfriend if that's what you can call it mm. Just passed away recently at the same time of the HIV. I just thought, yeah, it's just one of those times. Like, oh, some, maybe you know, like, just put your hand up and just. Yeah. Can I ask you this? So, so we are chatting to the great Ian Roberts, and, and what, what you did was so important in many ways, and remains so important to this day. Um, when you chose to come out, and you said it was the worst kept secret in the in the game. Yeah. How did you announce that back in those days? Um, and, and and sorry and and. What were the feelings after? Were you very content and relief? I think um, the story there, there was a story printed in, in in a magazine, New New Weekly or something. And I was actually over in England at the, at the time. Um, that's what that sort of announced it here. Then uh, I think it was the end of ninety four or ninety five. It was in ninety five. Um, yeah. So it, 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 then when I came back, it was the start of the ninety five season. That that that. Um, I nearly said when the shit hit the fan. That's yeah. not what I mean. When um, <laughs> when we had to deal with all the, had to deal with it. Yeah, it's probably not a good choice of words for a, for a gay man, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, like and and, and it's uh, so I wasn't actually, but it, um, I, I do I do remember Bo's the, the uh, first training session when I came back. And, and there'd been all that s- stuff in the paper. It was and Bose is like Robbo. What have you done, mate? Yeah. It's, it's just he's. But I will say this, mate. I'll tell I tell a story occasionally. Um, a '94 on the Kangaroo tour, and uh, you hadn't come out yet. Not officially, yeah, not, right. Not, but everyone knew. I, like I was. I, I remember when we went on the '94 tour. I went over there with the full intent of being a gay guy, like a gay man, like just just being who I am, not a gay. I, just, that's, I shouldn't say that mm. like a gay. I just being myself. Right? Yeah. And then um, in the first test, we got beat. And my, my form up to that stage had been really good. Like, um, I can probably say I was probably the, the, the best, like, front row uh, uh, in the team at that time mm. with my form, and particularly on, t- on tour. We got beat in the first test. We got beat, like, 8-4 against uh, – they got – against 12 men. Like, they, they played a, a game about uh, – but the, 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 the palms played out of their skin, right? Mm. But I still had a good game. I didn't yeah. think I was going to get dropped. Then a week later um, – we get this phone call in the room and off Bose and Terry Hill, who's my roommate, he picks up and he says, oh, Robbo, Bose is on the phone, mate. Like, and you don't get a phone call off Bose unless you're getting cut or something really serious is happening back home, like yeah. something that's serious. So I got on the phone, hey, Bose, how you going, mate? He's at Robbo. Oh, when I say Bose, everyone knows that's Bobby Fulton. Yes. Um, he says, uh, Robbo, you, uh, you need to come up and see me, mate, straight away. And I'm like, ah. Oh. He's gonna. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. I think he's gonna cut me. Like yeah. you know, I'm just like. But we'll I'm thinking. But, but I'm. But I'm. Think, but I'm thinking. Oh, I'm feeling good. You yeah. know what's going on. Anyway, so it's the old code, and you'd know this, Fletch. On two up, players, wives, and girlfriends aren't allowed to stay with you in the hotel. They're yep. allowed to come and visit, but you stay together in the team as a group, right? Yep. Or they can come and say good day. Yep. You, you know the rules, mate. Except if you're playing cricket. Cricket. Oh. They, they bring their wives with them. Oh, right. okay. Mm. Well, I didn't know certain that. Okay. wives. <laughs> right. I'm not going to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, so I I I, um, I go up to the obviously Bose is staying in the penthouse. 
uh, go up to the top floor and I walk to his door and his door is uh, like half a dozen inches ajar, you know. So I look in and there's bows. And it, Fletch, you know bows. You used to know bows. It cools a cucumber, right? Mm. Nothing phases him. I'm looking in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the gap and there's bows. He's pacing up and down, right? And I'm thinking, oh, what's going on? Mm. And I'm watching him. And then I, after a couple of minutes, I think, you know, knock on the door. And he says, oh, Robbo, come in, mate, sit down. And he starts pacing again. And I'm thinking, by this stage, I'm thinking something bad's happened back home, right? I'm thinking yeah. something, like, serious has happened to my mum and dad or, you know. Um, and I said, Bays, I just stop, mate. Like, like, what's going on? Just tell me what's, what's going on. He says, uh, <laughs> mate, this is a wonderful story. He says to me, mate, this is the hardest, com- let me say, this is the hardest conversation Bobby Fulton's ever had in his life. He, uh, he says, uh, Robbo, um, <laughs> you can't find the words. I'm like, Bo, just tell me, mate. He says, Robbo, you know I don't mind, eh? I'm like, what? <laughs> he says, you know I don't mind, you know, like you and... <laughs> and he's like pointing, like, he's like, <laughs> lost. I said, what do you mean, he's, you and Shane, mate? And I said, no. And I'm, I kind of, ger- but I didn't, couldn't work out what the... He says, mate, I, Shane's not allowed to stay with you in the hotel, mate. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Bose? I said, he's not, mate. He's staying in a B&B up the road. He's just, you know. He says, oh, so he's not staying. I've heard that wrong. Someone's giving the right. I said, yeah, mate, he's not staying here. He's like, oh, great, Robert. That's all I needed to hear, mate. He said, oh, that's all I needed to hear, mate. He said, not a problem. Well, off you go, off you go. <laughs> but 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 it was like, that, it was at that moment. I leaned in the room. I turned around. I just said, Bose, thank you, mate. I mean, this is the first time I felt validated, you know. Really? So he had- and, and then we had a kiss and we came <laughs> So Bozo had never come to you before. But, but it about always, being gay, yeah, ne- no, never mentioned it. No, nah, but it's like the first time in, anyone in rugby league had kind of validated the. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It was one of those moments. Like it, he, uh, he's a champion, mate. I just, uh, yeah, I have uh, such a like. I had such a respect for him because it was, like I said, mate, it was the hardest conversation he's ever had. Yeah, to have. yeah, yeah. Can I ask you this, Robbo? And I've been wanting to ask you this exact question for a while, and I'd love your thoughts on it because if these numbers are true or close to true, then it would help a lot of people here yeah. in what you're view is on this. So I'd heard maybe a decade ago that somebody who, who would know the answer to this believed, and it could be inaccurate, they believed that as an average, uh, each rugby league squad would have, say, 30 people. There would be, you know, almost one gay player per squad of 30. Do, do you believe that number would be close to true? And if it is true, are you... What would your feelings be on why we haven't heard about it? Would you like to hear about it or not hear about it? Mate, I mean, I suppose if you look at, you know, if you're talk, talking to, a, to, to a, a group of dancers or, or in the arts and theatre, you know, a group of 30 men, you would probably suggest there'd be more than one of those people being gay. And, and I'm not saying that... Um, it is only the arts, or, or, or you know, that that, that 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 attracts that. But what I'm saying is, you would definitely think that, that there would there would be gay that there would be gay. I'm talking men here. I can't talk on yeah. behalf of, the, of of lesbians. But like you definitely think jockey, police officer, yeah, whatever right, it is, yeah, school teacher. Right? Yeah. But, but 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 within the arts and and that type of thing, you you kind of expect there to be gay men. Um, uh, I would I would probably suggest if you randomly pick thirty men thirty men off the street, like. One of them would probably, you know, would be if not gay, bisexual, or same-sex attracted in some way, or or you know, the, the crazy thing is, but mate, what I have learned since being involved with Q taping is a lot of men who are same-sex attracted don't um, identify as being gay or bisexual. They, it's, I mean, I don't, I mean, I I get it, but I kind of I do find it, yeah, you know, that they have sex with, they have sex with men. That's how mm. they identify. It, like, mm. it, um. But what I'm, what I'm hearing what you're saying. I think it would be hard to uh, not to think that it wouldn't shock you. No, absolutely no, not. No. No. Yeah. J- just on that, Robert, because we've got to go. We've got to um, finish up here. Oh, gee whiz. Robert, but Qtopia, I know you're behind this, and we can't say museum, but for yeah. an arch, is it? What, what it's, actually it, is it? It's a, a center for uh, culture, for culture and history and yeah. education. Yeah, yeah. Of, of the, Ma- of the Mardi Gras? Que- no, no. Que- queer life. Okay. Queer life in Australia. Like, this is right from colonisation right through, uh, right up until now. That's it's- gone way too quick, Rob. We appreciate your time, but are you able to hang around for a bit longer? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Off? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've- beautiful. Beautiful. So those four French blokes here <laughs> in that test match. <laughs> so Ian Roberts, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to hang around, which is fantastic. I can't believe how quick that went. Yeah, right. it was pretty quick. Chris Radlinski is going to join us a little bit later on as well. Had you played with Chris, you could have stayed on, on for that chat as well. 
uh, Ian Roberts. But uh, more to come right after this as we head towards the last half an hour of the show, the run home with Joel and Fletch. Of course, if you're listening live through the airways and the radio, SEN, you can catch it relatedly. If you've missed some of the chat with Robbo, if you've missed the chat with Sam Wood, uh, the podcast will be there. And a lot of our rugby league chats as well, you can find on our YouTube page uh, as well, SEN, the run home with Joel and Fletch. Quick break, and then back with the great man on the other side of this. Run home with Joel and Fletch, all thanks to Hyundai. Uh, the SUV sale for 2023 is on now. Now, Brian, um, the career of this man, uh, rugby league, yes, plenty of that, acting as well. But what he's doing uh, away from rugby league, we'll get to that very, very shortly. We've touched on it with Qtopia. But the tech sport has exploded. Yeah, it's been uh, – yeah, this one here caught my um, – Pique my interest. This is a great interview with Robbo. This is from Mark from Monday noon. Monday noon. One of my sons is gay, and while my wife and I sort of knew it, the day he officially told us was one of the most emotional experiences for us all. Now he was free and he's become a remarkable person. Ian is a role model for same-sex people. In his, I'm from his era and respected him as a player and person. Best of luck, Robbo. That's very sweet to hear, mate. Yeah. That, that, I've, I've been very fortunate, mate. Thank you. For, do, you do you get a lot of people coming up to you and, and saying that sort of stuff? It's uh, it's always humbling, mate. And it's re- like I said, mate, I've been very fortunate. I, 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 we spoke off air before. I, I consider myself really lucky that I never had that situation where I was ever kind of um, – I've always been fine with being same-sex attracted. I've never really had any – I've never had self-loathing or mm. – uh, which Can is, I ask you this? Did you ever have a girlfriend? Uh, I've been with girls, yeah. I mean, I girlfriend – I've had girls that that, that that I tried to date, and I, mm. I, I mean, up until my, my my teens, I used to think, "Oh, this is just the thing that everyone goes through." What a phase, like, yeah. I, I, you don't know, like yeah. I just, I like, uh, yeah. But I, yeah, so not an actual girlfriend, right. in, in inverted commas. I had, I mean, I've been with girls, and um, it just wasn't <laughs> obviously wasn't my wasn't uh, your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, Rob. I want to use this opportunity because obviously, on numbers, there has to be a gay rugby league player. You would um, think so. Yeah. So at least one gay rugby league player currently. If you could speak direct to that player or players and offer them advice around whether they should or shouldn't, I know the times are very different. Brian and I seem to think that the world's far more accepting than, than the time when you had to come out back in those days. But what would be your advice to a person who who may be in a similar situation? You have to be really confident and feel like you're in a safe space. Like you really have to be like comfortable with yourself and and obviously because of the situation you know the spotlight is going to hit you like mm. and you are going to be like in an intense like uh floodlight for for for, for, for a period of time which you have to which, which you you have to prepare yourself for and i was like once you come out you can't go back in it's yeah. like it's i don't and the other thing is once you come out you're always coming out yes. like it's not people think you come out once you don't like you come out i mean i'm coming out again here yes. like, you, you, you get what i'm saying yes, like, yes yes and if you have a profile but i will say this you um i think if anyone came out particularly playing a contact sport like uh the afl rugby union or rugby league now they'd be a superhero like, yeah. I, oh, of course. I, I mean that seriously, yes. particularly in those contact sports. Yeah. Uh, like, um, and you will, I, I can promise you this, you will change so many people's lives for, for the better. So many p- people, kids out there in the suburbs uh, need, need, to, need visibility, need to, you know, need, it's, but, you know, it does come at a, it can come at a cost too, you know, mm. like, it's, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, they need to be safe and secure in their, in their own sense of self, mate. Well, if somebody uh, listening out there is thinking that way, I'd, I'd be tracking this mm. man down, Brian. Yeah, I'd be absolutely. tracking. I'm sure just knowing. Robo, I've got a question for you. When you did come out and rugby league, when you're out in the field, you can get sledges. Yeah. yeah. What did Gary Jack say to you when you punch his <laughs> face off? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to go there. No. We, we settled. No, no, we settled that. Right. Yeah, 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 in... Was was it hard? Because rugby league's a lot of sledging going. You know, Fletcher, and you would understand this, mate. Yes, it definitely happened, mate. Mm. And like it definitely happened to me. Yeah, and I'm not whinging. But if I'll say this, mate, if I'd had red hair, it would have been about that. Yeah. If I'd been someone of colour, yeah, it would have been about yeah. that. If I'd been a big fat b- bastard, it would have been about that. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, so it was just... but, but, but you know what I mean? Like they're just people. They're just yes. guys trying to get under your skin. And it was a very different concept back then. That, like, that, hopefully that stuff doesn't go on now. Like no. you, you'd like to think that the game and 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 the authorities within the game have kind of cut. You know. But uh, would it would it irk you, or was it just water off a duck's back when you're out in the field? 
Uh, when, when I'd already come out, after I'd come out, it was water off, it was almost a bit of a joke. Like, yeah. we could joke about it. It was almost yeah. like, you know, we could, I could joke with the opposition about it. Yeah. You know, like, like. But uh, it wouldn't get you fired up. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Well, no. When I was, b- before I'd come out, particularly when I, you know, the early 90s, yes. Yeah. That really, I mean, I was, I had a chip on my shoulder, mate. Yes. Yeah. I and mean, that was me playing out. A lot of that, the, the Gary Jack stuff you just said, that was me just playing out, mate. Right. Like, just with a chip, like a real chip on my shoulder. But is that why you. Like, do you think that's why you would scream off the line and try and yeah, whack a bloke? Absolutely, right. Just to show, right? Eh? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I did used to think somehow, like, if this is if, if this is a level, I've got to be above it. For I'm, people I'm, I'm just going to fold you in two here, Robbo. We need a favour because we are on SEN League now. The camera's right there. Can you just turn facing the camera? Firstly, <laughs> check out the Warwick Farms on this place. Yeah, it's Jeez. good. <laughs> Have <laughs> a look at the Warwicks. <laughs> but <laughs> but the colourful logo that you got yes. right there on your just under your Gregory Pecks over your Gregory Pecks. Is Qtopia, yeah. yeah, Sydney. Tell us about that again mate, once, real quickly, and how how people can get behind it, mate. It's it's all about education, 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 mate. It's it's a it's a centre for history, culture, and education in and around um, uh, the queer community. Uh, we talk about uh, there are exhibitions and galleries about. Um, uh, illegality to legality, uh, uh, pre-colonisation with indigenous stuff. It's a it's a full history of the, of, of the queer the queer world in and around Sydney. So, you know, we open on the twenty third of uh, of this month. Um, so please, anyone anyone who wants to be a part, this is all about. Don't complain, contribute. You know, mm. we, we we can only succeed if the greater community get behind us, and and, and I mean that. If we, I'm raising I'm raising money, sponsorships, partnerships. Anyone want to make a donation? This is all about educate educating kids. Awesome. So tracking down Qtopia, search that, get behind them. Uh, you've raised a bit of money, but you want to keep going further and further. QtopiaSydney.com.au, go there. Yep. Ian Roberts, legend Ian of the Robo. game. Um, before you go, Rob, I know you follow the game closely still. Your tip for 2024, who's who? Oh, mate, like you'd have to say after, like, I think it's going to be four in a row, but I mean. Oh, Panthers. Yeah, I, I still think, mate, that I, I think Ivan's a genius, mate. Yeah. I think he's the best coach of the last probably 10 years. Yep. I just think he, he just, um, I don't know, I just he just reads and he just gets the best out of his players. Mm, yeah. Rob, a, a question. Is the film festival, because I know you're uh, talking about this, has that got anything to do with Qtopia or is that no, separate? No, it's, it's very separate, mate, very separate. Okay. So the film festival is? It's, it's a, that's a Mardi Gras event. Qtopia, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's a whole, it's, it, that, that comes under the Mardi Gras banner, mate. Gotcha. Qt, Qtopia does, even though we're, connect, we're connected with Mardi Gras, we're, we're in the Mardi Gras, we're in the parade, all that. It's okay. a to, 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 Totally different ventures, mate. Okay. We've got to run because Chris Radlinski on the other side of the world's waiting by, but uh, we want to get you back on. We didn't get enough into the film side of things, Brian. Well, Mr. In Between, that was We'll do awesome. that next time. It's a good show, isn't it? It's a yeah. great show. Yeah. 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 Any shows you're watching now real quickly? Uh, we can't I just, let you go. I, I, just, <laughs> I, just, I just started – I just came to the party and just started watching um, True Detectives. It's oh, about, yeah. It's about 10 years old. But I just – the Woody I'm, Harrelson one? Oh, yeah. I've not it's seen fa- it. Fanta- it's fantastic. Yeah. It's extraordinary, mate. Awesome. Yeah. Woody Harrelson and uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you, Ian Roberts. Thanks for Thanks joining for the run home with Joel and Fletch. And uh, the board's exploded. They want to hear more from you, so we'll make sure that happens later in the year. My pleasure, guys. The great Ian Roberts. What a privilege that was.